My name is Michelle and full disclaimer, I am not a doctor and I'm not giving any medical advice in this video. If you feel like you have medical type questions, please direct them to your physician. Thank you. So um, I have been dealing with medical issues for the last two years and I've gone to several doctors, different doctors, and um, was not getting an answer to what my problem was. Uh, it started with my toes. I went to a podiatrist because my toes were doing some weird things. And then this is all on the left side of my body and um, didn't get an answer there. Then the next thing was, I think it was my arm. I was getting nerve issues, like nerve, like a tingling sensation going down my arm into my hand that happened for several months. And then it just stopped. And then I had pain in my shoulder. So I went to an orthopedic surgeon and he said I had frozen shoulder. And I asked him, I said, does this have to do with why my arm doesn't really swing and it shakes sometimes? And he said, yeah, it could be. And that was the end of that. And then uh, my gait had changed. All This was all happening pretty much around the same time. So then my left foot my left leg just wasn't really doing the same as the right, so it kind of looked like I'm limping. Um, so then, you know, the next thing was I had slowness in my hand. Like, uh, for example, when I type now, my right hand types really fast, my left hand not so much. So typing has slowed down a bit. So it wasn't until December of last year, 2021, that I was like, I've got to figure this out. And uh, something made me think about Parkinson's and how it's associated to tremors. And I Googled that. And after I read the symptoms, I was just like, this is what I have. And I had a mini breakdown um, had a little pity party moment and um, then I called to schedule appointments to get in to see a neurologist. I just had my appointment um, late January scheduled for a DAT scan and the doctor called on February 10th, 2022 and informed me that the DAT scan showed decreased levels of dopamine in the right side of my brain which coincides with what's going on with the left side of my body. Um, so up to this point, from December to my appointment, I watch so many videos about Parkinson's. I watch accredited doctors, I watch people's stories. I try to soak up as much information as I could. The doctor suggested starting medication and I said no, I wanted to hold off on that because from what I've learned, it seems that the medication only lasts for so long and then it starts to be less effective. And he said, yes, there's controversy on that. And if I want to hold off, that's fine. So I'm still not sure what the right thing to do is. And uh, I have an appointment with him in a month and I will discuss it with him even more because right now I don't feel like I need the medication. Uh, right now I'm dealing with some tremor in the left hand. I've got the gait, the minimal arm swing, but overall, I'm still functioning pretty well. And uh, then I also made an appointment with a movement disorder specialist. Unfortunately, I can't get in to see one until June. They're in such high demand. So when I see the movement disorder specialist, I will talk to them about medication and the whole gamut of uh, things related to Parkinson's. But in the meantime, I've got to live day by day, do my best to stay active because apparently being active with exercise helps slow the progression. Uh, I've noticed that if I sit too long, my muscles tend to get, they just feel like they get tighter. It's just like if you're kind of in a position too long, you know, everything just kind of freezes in that position and then I'm in more pain. So when I'm at work, I get up, I try to walk as much as I can. I try to stretch as much as I can. And I hired a trainer that I'll be seeing once a week and he gave me, um, I downloaded an app and he gives me exercises to do when I'm not with him. So that will hold me accountable and help keep me, keep the motivation up a little bit. Because I was just struggling to work out on my own because with my toes doing what they were doing, 
uh, cycling, road, like I love to get out on the road and ride my bike. I'll do 20 miles, but I've noticed like my toes just start pushing down in the my shoes and it just feels uncomfortable. And the same with the Peloton. So now my rides have just shortened significantly, but I'm just not willing to give up quite yet. So I still get on the, the bikes and, and uh, go for short rides. I also love to compete, uh, to shoot competitively through USPSA. And uh, I was starting to worry that I wouldn't be able to do that for much longer. But then I actually came across uh, Jimmy Choi, who is, who's done American Ninja Warrior several times. And um, I found him so motivational, like so inspirational that he's so active in doing what he's doing with Parkinson's. So I reached out to him for some tips and he actually pointed me in the direction of Dave Smith who is also known as Parkinson Shooter or AKA Shaky Dave. And when I saw Dave shooting and wearing a jersey, my heart just lit up. I just was just like, oh my God, if he can do it, I can do it. Don't have the give up frame of mind. So I'm not giving up. I'm gonna keep the can do attitude and I'm gonna keep doing what I love for as long as I can do it. So thanks Dave, thanks Jimmy for the motivation you provided. Um, there are other people out there that I've seen their stories and they were also motivational to me because it's nice to see what they're going through, how they're dealing with it, um, tips they provide. And I thought to myself, you know, I want to do the same thing because I found it really helpful to look at other people's stories. So I want to share my story, how I got part, how I discovered getting Parkinson's, which I just did and my progression on you know how it goes what i'm doing um the highs and the lows uh there are motor symptoms and there are non-motor symptoms with parkinson's and the non-motor symptoms they can actually stretch back to 10 20 years ago and when i looked at the symptoms i was like oh wow like one of them is orthostatic hypotension when you kind of get dizzy when you get up to quickly from a chair. Um, I was like, I've had that for a long time. I've actually fainted from it before. And then there's insomnia. Uh, I dealt with that since I think back in 2004. I finally went and saw a doctor. I was like, I, I'm not getting any sleep. I need help. So I got on sleep medication. I've been on it ever since. And honestly, it's been a lifesaver because my problem back then was I would sleep, I would fall asleep, but then I would wake up and I would be up for hours. And that is a very well-known symptom in Parkinson's. But of course, like a lot of people have sleep issues that aren't related to Parkinson's. So again, it's, it's hard to tell. But at this point, now that I know all the symptoms and I look back, I'm like, okay, I had this, I had this, I had this. So it wasn't until I got the motor symptoms is when I came to the conclusion that, oh, I've got Parkinson's. <laughs> um, there's also memory issues. Uh, sometimes I have a problem finding words when I'm talking to people. That was another thing that made me push to go see a doctor. But anyways, uh, I'm not going to get into all of them, all of the symptoms. I just know that I have a decent gamut of the symptoms and, uh, and I'm learning to live with them. Well, I don't want to make this video too long. This was just intended to just talk about my diagnosis and where I'm going from here. And I plan on sharing my stories, so keep an eye out for them. And I hope you found this helpful. And uh, have a great day. Bye.